feelies, mags, spinners, rims. Don't say rims, people don't say rims. People say wheels. Wheels are like jewelry for your ride. So they can broadcast to the world what your personal style is, but they're also super important to a car's performance. You probably already know that to an extent, the lighter the car is, the better it's gonna perform. The weight of the wheels is also a huge factor in how well your car drives and handles. So, uh, a doy, lighter wheels are better. They've got less rotational inertia and they create less unsprung weight. Let's start with inertia. An object with more mass has a greater tendency to resist changes in its state of motion. That means both moving from a state of rest and stopping from a state of movement. Rotational inertia is the resistance to a change in rotation around an axis. If you think about how we defined torque, force at a distance, more force further away from your axis means more force on the axis. You can check out our torque versus horsepower video here. But with wheels, it's the same principle in reverse. More mass further from the axis requires more force from the center to get moving. How much energy it takes to change how fast an object is spinning is directly proportional to its rotational inertia. You've probably seen the example of the spinning ice skaters. With their arms fully extended, they've got a fairly large rotational inertia and they spin at a certain speed. If the skater pulls their arms in toward their body, some mass has moved toward the center of rotation, giving them less rotational inertia. And because of the laws of the conservation of energy, they start spinning faster. So, an object with mass closer to its center of rotation will take less energy to spin and less energy to accelerate than an object with an identical mass located further from its axis. If you take a 25 pound 18 inch wheel and a 25 pound 20 inch wheel that have the same distribution of mass and you give them a nudge with the same amount of force, the 18 inch wheel is going to accelerate more quickly. By the same reasoning, the smaller wheel can also be stopped sooner when the brakes are applied. And if you add some extra hefty 26 inch dubs to your ride, the engine's gonna have to work harder to get it rolling. That's gonna make the car slower off the line and hurt fuel economy when you're trying to accelerate. Wheels are also a part of a car's unsprung weight. Unsprung weight is the stuff that the suspension doesn't support. And it includes the suspension components, the braking systems mounted therein, and the tires. Sprung weight is all the stuff that the suspension does support, like the engine, the exhaust, the bodywork, and the interior. The suspension's got its hands full controlling all of that weight already. And it also has to control the wheels and tires as they bounce over the ground. Heavy wheels add a lot of unsprung weight. The shocks and springs won't be able to control the motion of a heavy wheel as well or as quickly as they would a lighter set of wheels. Add in the tire weight and a typical car's wheel and tire combo can hit 50 pounds. Just imagine how much harder it'd be for you to control 50 pounds hanging off one arm versus 40. It's, it's 25%, 25% harder. Or it's 20% easier. It, anyways. Lightweight wheels let the car suspension do a better job keeping the wheels and tires on the road. Unless you're in a hydraulic car jumping competition, if your wheels and tires are making consistently good contact with the road, you're gonna have better traction, better control, and a better handling car overall. It'll have a better ride too, because the suspension can do its job. You might love how those heavy 20s look, but if you care more about performance than style, you're better off without them. To take advantage of the performance benefits of lightweight wheels, car manufacturers these days sell most of their models with aluminum alloy wheels instead of steel ones. Aluminum is almost one-third the density of steel. Yes, it's usually an aluminum nickel alloy, but it still comes in way under what an equivalent steel wheel would be. It also doesn't hurt that alloy wheels can be made to look a lot better than steely. Steel wheels 
are just stamped pieces of steel that are welded together. They're not light, and they certainly aren't pretty, but they are strong and durable. Their significant head actually makes them better for finding traction, say in the snow. So steel wheels are perfect for your set of winter tires. Some of the earliest lightweight wheels were made using magnesium alloy, and they are used for, what else? Racing! And that's why your dad said, oh cool, mag wheels, when he found out he had rims on his 1996 Grand Caravan. It became an overarching term for cool wheels. Magnesium is the lightest metallic material around, so the wheels were way lighter than steels. But they had major problems with corrosion. New production techniques and protective coatings have made magnesium alloy wheels more durable. And no, they don't burst into flames. They are crazy light, but they cost a lot. So you usually only see them on race cars and expensive track toys. Most modern alloy wheels are cast from a much more reasonably priced combination of aluminum and nickel. The metals are melted down together and then either poured, blown, or sucked into a mold Earmuffs. and allowed to cool. The proportion of each metal determines the wheel's weight and strength. Less nickel makes lighter wheels, but they can be much more prone to bending. More nickel adds a little weight and resistance to bending, but then they're more prone to cracking. But overall, casting strikes the best balance of cost, style, and performance. Flow forming is a new manufacturing method that takes a cast wheel and applies heat and high pressure rollers to the inside of the barrel. The aluminum gets stretched and compressed, which gives it some extra strength. If you want a much stronger lightweight wheel, you want forged aluminum alloy wheels. In forging, a solid block of billet aluminum is crushed into a wheel shape using heat and millions of pounds of pressure. The shape is then refined with high pressure rollers and even more heat. Using all that force gives the aluminum a much higher density than if it's cast, but still comparably lighter than steel. So the wheels gain massive amounts of strength while staying super light. And because they're priced somewhere between magnesium alloys and cast aluminum alloys, forged wheels are a great option for people who want it all. Wheels! Subscribe to Donut it means a lot. And if you want to see more cool stuff, check out Brilliant. If you want to get a better hold on the physics of inertia that we just yelled about? Well, then you really need to check out Brilliant.org. You get to apply all of this in real-world demonstrations that help you develop your intuition on a deeper level. Actively solving problems becomes addictive. An interactive experience, and I gotta tell you, it's pretty cool. A great place to start is with Classical Mechanic, which helps you develop a rigorous approach to describing nature while investigating phenomena like drones and rockets. Go to brilliant.org slash science garage and sign up for free. Also, the first 200 people to go to the link will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. I'll see you there. Brilliant! Be sure if you haven't already, guys, click this big yellow button. It means subscribe. And that's gonna make sure you never miss an episode of Science Garage. Guys, follow me on Instagram at BidsBardo. Follow Donut at Donut Media. If you hate your wheels, check out this episode on potholes. Check out our video on how brakes work. See you next week. Don't tell my wife how much the wheels on the car actually cost.